Welcome into another episode of the Huskers Radio Network podcast. I'm Jessica Cootie and so very excited to be joined by one of the greatest players in Nebraska women's basketball history and the woman who will have her jersey retired on Sunday, the fourth woman to have her jersey to be hung from the rafters inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. Jordan Hooper, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. You got to be pretty excited about the Sunday. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm just I'm ready to get down there. I've been waiting like a month and a half for this and I'm ready to get down there. Okay, well, let's start with the phone call and and your perspective of it because we've heard Coach Williams tell it and it's a pretty great story, but just, you know, what your reaction was and the lead up to it and all of that. Yeah, so um, Jeff Grish told me it was going to be a recruiting phone call. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And so I was hanging Christmas lights, and I got the phone call, and she said, yeah, we're going to um, honor the 2013-2014 team, and then also we're going to hang your jersey. And, yes, there was some cussing. There was lots of tears. It was just overwhelming joy. Like, I was so happy. So just it was a really awesome phone call. <laughs> You know, and to have some of the, the current players here and or they were on the call, right? And then just to hear them throughout my time that I've been here kind of mention your name and, and how you inspired them. But to be able to share that moment with them, that had to be a, a pretty cool moment, too. Yeah. <clears throat> well, obviously, like it wasn't a FaceTime, so I didn't see them at the time. But, yeah, um, she had mentioned that there were, I think, four or five of the current players in there. Um, and that was awesome to share the moment with them. And because, I mean... Yes, they, some of them are from Nebraska, and obviously some of them are, but I think the ones that are from Nebraska, it's kind of how I was feeling when I was watching when I was in high school and stuff, and even beyond, like Kelsey Griffin, when she went on to play more, you just, it's a, I don't it's really hard to explain, but it's just something about the Huskers, and you just, it's it's awesome to be in that those same conversations with the greats. So when you first started playing basketball, would you have ever thought this day would come where your jersey would be hanging from the rafters of uh, Pinnacle Bank Arena? <laughs> no, honestly, no. I just, I, I, you, you start something because you love it. You start something because it's fun or your friends are doing it or your parents are like, yeah, let's go do this or something. And, and then it becomes something bigger than that. And then you can kind of start having those dreams and those goals. But those don't show up until, you know, high school, college, all that stuff. And then you're like, yeah, this would be awesome. But even then, it's just, it's really hard even now to wrap my head around what's happening this weekend. So I'm just really excited and what a huge honor. And it's, I mean, it's awesome. I'm just really excited. So I heard a great story about how you first got into basketball. I think you were doing the interview when you were back playing here about <laughs> you, you were kind of seen at a, a, a graduation party and then your mom dropped you off and you didn't even want to go play basketball. Take me back to that, how you first even got into basketball. Yeah, well, I was a painfully shy kid, like <laughs> excruciatingly painful, like <clears throat> didn't even talk to my uncles. Um, it was Oh, it was awful. So socially awkward and still not great, but better. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So my mom was like <clears throat> Coach Brew at the time because that's who really discovered me and taught me basketball. Like he knew exactly what he was doing when he found me and, and never ever saw me, I guess. And then he said to my mom, you need to bring her in to get a basketball in her hands. And my mom was like, yeah, sure. I'm like she doesn't care. She's like, yeah, whatever, you know. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Because they were older than me than by a year. Because I was a third grader and they were fourth graders. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. That's terrifying. <laughs> so she's like, well, you have to get out of the car because I have to go back to work. So she dropped me off, left me there. I went in. Everything was fine. Everything was great. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's just that that awkwardly shyness. Like, it was so bad. I was like, what? and I didn't talk. I didn't talk until high school to people. Like, couldn't have conversations. So, I mean, I've... From that to now is like just, it's huge. It's a huge step, obviously. Oh, that's awesome. What a great story. So uh, Alliance Nebraska and, and from that first time you got dropped off there in third grade to, to where you got to the, where you were being recruited by Nebraska, your home state school, what went into that journey to be able to get uh, that offer from the Huskers? Um, just a lot of hard work constantly um i wasn't sure if i wanted to be a husker at that point like when i be like began my recruiting process and people started reaching out i didn't know obviously where you want to go you're 16 17 you have no clue um 
And then finally, I had, I literally had to sit down with myself and I'm like, what do I want to do? Does it want to be like, does, is it volleyball? Is it basketball? Is it this school? Is it this school? You know? So those were some tough, <laughs> tough conversations with myself, but I think I came to the perfect decision and I don't regret anything. And it was that process though, is always hard. And I do tell people that, that are, you know, going through it, the, the recruiting process is hard. And I, some of the phone calls I didn't handle the best with different schools and stuff. But like I said, I think I made the perfect decision. So I'm happy with it. What ultimately led you to choose basketball over volleyball? Um, <clears throat> like I said, I had to have the conversation with myself. And I think it was just, am I going to love this for four years, you know, doing it for four years? And I couldn't really see myself, I guess, loving volleyball for four years. I'm sure I would have. I'm sure it would have been awesome. And I I do kind of regret not trying both at the time, but it would have been really tough. And I, again, I'm really happy with my decision. So I, that was honestly just kind of what do I love more? And I'd played basketball more. So it was my first love. So you get here and uh, immediately are able to contribute, but your, your team's had a lot of success too. Take me back to uh, the, and the, the team that's going to be honored this this uh, weekend, the Big Ten championship team and, and that run. And what was so special about that team? Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, I think we just had all the pieces. We just all clicked. We were all friends. Um, we wanted the best for the person sitting next to us. We wanted the best for Coach Ori. We just wanted to succeed so much that I think we just sacrificed a lot that year in, in the best way, if that makes sense. Like, again, we just were all really great friends, um, and it showed. Like, the chemistry showed on the court. And like I said, we had all the right pieces at the right time, and it just all clicked together. How did your game grow and develop from being just a shooter to being you're all over the record books in just about every uh, statistical statistical category and, and the rebounder that you became? Um, was that a process for you once you got here? How did you how did you tackle that part of it? Um, yeah, I, in high school, I was kind of everything. I had to do a lot of stuff. I had to bring the ball up. I had to rebound, shoot, all that stuff. And so I think I was starting to grow into that as I'd gone to college. And then once I got to college, I was kind of like, well, you know, I, I don't really, I knew my role, but I didn't, if that makes sense. Like, again, I was so young and just kind <clears> of <throat> thrust into a starting position that I wanted. Like I truly wanted that, but I didn't really know how to handle it. And I didn't really know, I guess, what to do, when to do, you know, like it, you have to learn and, and college is so much different than high school. And you just have to, you have to take it in stride and just learn. And so I did that. And so then I grew and that's when I was like more confident. So then when you're more confident, you do a lot more things on the floor. So you rebound and you, I don't know, you actually play defense and, you know, like <laughs> stuff like that. So I think it was just getting, gaining confidence and having Coach Ori have confidence in me. My teammates had confidence in me and I just, I tried my best and that was as much as I could do. That's awesome. How, how uh, did your time at Nebraska help set you up for what you did getting drafted to the WNBA, but then playing your, your professional career? everything. I mean, the way that Coach Ori um, ran practices, the way that we were very time oriented and everything made sense and organized and, every, you know, like having that foundation going into the professional um, circuit is just, it's huge because you don't really, I mean, if you don't have it, you don't have it. You're going to have to learn it and it's going to come whenever it's going to come, but it might come really slowly and it might take you a while. But I'd already had that foundation, so I knew like how to be organized, I knew how to be time conscious, I knew how to have a work ethic, all that stuff. So I think, yeah, it laid the foundation for everything, honestly. Like it was that in high school and I mean, even my parents and stuff, like we were, I worked on a ranch for my dad and everything. So I'm like, yeah, I have I have it instilled. I just have to, you know, use it. And so I think Nebraska let like I knew how to use it after I, I went to Nebraska. So that was good. A fellow sheep shower, right? I showed sheep. You showed sheep, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Sheep and beef, and I did a little bit of photography, not much. But, yeah, sheep Sheep are my favorite for sure. Oh, very cool. Give us, if you can, it might. this might be a tough question, but two or three of your favorite memories of that time when you were wearing that Husker uniform. Yeah, that is tough. <laughs> um, obviously, the Big Ten Championship, huge. Um, and I, I think the Sweet 16 run was really fun. Um, and then it's not in the uniform, but just all of the 
bus rides, all of the plane rides, all of the dinners and stuff. Like us just being ourselves and having fun and having those conversations. And like I said, we were all friends. So like just having friend stuff, you know, like that was my favorite memory too. Like the locker room stuff and the the cold tub stuff, like all that stuff that you don't obviously get to see <clears throat> when you're not part of it. But that stuff, that lasts longer sometimes than games and records and all that stuff. So I noticed you had um, commented with Alexis Markowski. She's coming after your double-double record. Uh, yeah. Yours and Kelsey's. Um, what's it been like watching her and another fellow Nebraskan and, and how her game has developed? It's awesome. I mean, like I, I tweeted her and I was like, just keep going, but go get it. You know, go get those records. It's, I mean, obviously that's a goal probably for her and it should be. And that's amazing. And I, I'm rooting for her. And like, yeah, and her development has just been great. And I'm really excited to see where she ends up and, and what she does. I'm really, really excited to see that. So like I said, keep going and super proud of her. How much does it mean to you that you did inspire this generation and uh, some of these players that are in this uniform now? And then uh, to me, it's just, it's so cool to see now the next generation that are being inspired by Alexis and, and who you ask me who their favorite player is, but just, you know, the, how it just passes on from generation to generation, how you keep, continue to inspire. I mean, uh, how important is that? What does that mean to you? Yeah. I mean, I've always said, I want to inspire kids. I want to inspire kids, blah, blah, blah. You say it all the time, but sometimes you don't actually see it happening. And so to see her now in college doing spectacular, like doing all of the things that you're like, yeah, I want to inspire her, blah, blah. No, like you never really see it sometimes. And so to see it and to have it be told and it's just, I mean, I never, I, I thought it would happen, but I, you know, I never thought it would happen. It's kind of that weird, like, <laughs> yeah, sure, whatever. But yeah, it's, it's really awesome to finally see it happening. And and to see somebody be so great that used to look up to you. And it, I mean, I, I, again, like you said, like I felt it looking up to Kelsey. I felt it looking up to all the players that went there that were great. And you're like, yeah, whatever. Like, I know how I felt. But you don't, I mean, you don't put yourself in their shoes until, you know, like now. Like, you're like, yeah, I guess I did do good things, you know, which is really <laughs> cool. Um, you know, the, the we're, we're pushing to pack PBA on Sunday because obviously honoring you and the, uh, the, alumni and all of that but then also it's a big matchup against indiana you played in mm -hmm. front of some great crowds this has been a fan base that has been in the the top 20 for years and years and years what did that kind of support mean to you then how special is it to see it continues now i mean yeah i i told this to a different person i was talking to um i said our fans help you win games um and it's simple as that like if if you have 10 or 12 people in the gym, it's really hard to win those games. You have to bring the energy yourself, and some days you just don't have it, you know. But you you see the crowd, you feel the crowd, you hear the crowd, and they just power you on to have that energy and have that drive to win games and stuff. And so, I mean, yeah, our fan base has been the best in every sport, which is just nuts. Like, even if we're terrible, we're going to show up. And, like, they they did. Like, I was we were terrible my freshman year. Like, we weren't good. We were bad and they still showed up and they're like yeah like we still believe you believe in you and we want you to win and I mean yeah it's it's great and now like after that like I haven't been there in a while you know like obviously I've been doing other things and but just because of my jersey being retired and people are reaching out again and I'm like oh yeah like this is what it feels like you know and it, it's it's weird to say that, but it's just awesome to have that support and that constant support. And I knew they were there, but until you like do something that they, you know, physically see, they're sometimes unaware that you still are, exist, <laughs> which I know that's not true. But it, I mean, this has been really awesome to get to reach out to people that I haven't spoken to in a really long time. Great perspective. Hey, you mentioned that you weren't very good your freshman year. How did that tide start to change towards uh, where the teams were when you left it? Yeah, well, I think that year, obviously, they just lost five seniors and tried to replace them with five freshmen. And that's really tough to do um, at any level, at any sport. You know, that's you have you lose leadership and you have to bring in people that don't really know how to lead yet. and They don't really know what they're doing. And so we had leaders. We had great, great people on that team. It's just I think we had too much young, you know, blood to to really do what we needed to do that year which is I mean that's fine you have to go through that and you have to know what losing feels like to know that you don't want to do that again and you have to know what winning feels like you know but yeah we changed the tide um 
I think just, again, we had experience. We got older. We knew what we were doing. We bought into Coach Ori's system. We bought into the culture that they were providing us. Um, and I think it was just an all-around, like I said, buy-in. And we just kind of committed. And we're like, well, we don't, again, we don't want that season again because it really was not that fun. <laughs> Uh, last thing I got for you, you know, again, just it seems like you just have a great deal of appreciation for this place and you're going to come back and it's going to be a special weekend. What did it mean to you to wear Huskers across the chest to be able to represent the inn? It was awesome. It was, I always tell this to people whenever I'm, they ask me about, you know, college or they ask me about the pros or whatever. I'm like, I would go back to college in a heartbeat. I would go back and do everything I did all over again, 10 times over. Like it was so fun. It was hard. Like, it was probably one of the hardest things like, mentally and, you know, physically and whatever. But you don't remember the hard things. Sometimes you do. But most of the time you remember, again, the relationships you built, the games, sometimes the, you know, the good stuff. You remember all of the hard-fought wins and the the practices that went on forever. But then after that, like, you went to, to the training table and you got food together. And then you went home and you, you know, it, I don't know. It was just it's those things that you remember and you just... You appreciate, I appreciate everything that Nebraska gave me and continues to do for me and, and just all of it. Like, I truly am appreciative of my my experience and, and the, the culture and the fan base and the coaches and, and, Co and Grish and Coatney and all of it. I just appreciate everybody. I said last thing, but I do have one more for you because I remember I was at um, – Oklahoma before I came here and I remember when Stacey Dales got her jersey retired and just you know how she had talked about not very many people in any sport get to have their jersey retired and it's just a very selective process just any men's women's no matter the sport so you think about that and just you know the that you're one of very few that are going to get to when people walk in every single day for a game whether it's men's or women's or whatever that's going on your jersey's going to be hanging up there what does that mean to you? How, I guess, how does that reflect? How do you reflect upon that? Has it sunk in yet, I guess? It's overwhelming in, in the best way possible. You know, like I looked up there every day, like you said, when I went to practice, when I went to games, I would look up there and see Karen Jennings, Martise Ivy, Kelsey Griffin. And I'm just like, yeah, like that's so awesome. And then you look over at the men and I'm sorry, I don't remember the men because... <laughs> I, I was a woman, you know, like you look up to who you are and what you see and all that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, you walk in there every day, you look up there and you see them and, and you go to different gyms, you look up there, you're like, well, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And that's, I mean, it's just going to be so surreal to see it unveiled. And yeah, I don't think it's sunk in quite yet. All of it. Um, I know it will when it's revealed. I know it will when I'm driving home. Like, um, it's just but it's like I said, it's overwhelmingly just good emotions. All of it, all of it's going to be so fun. And I'm so, like I said, I'm so excited to see my teammates and my coaches and everybody that's going to be, be there and talk to me. And I'm, I, I don't know, it's just going to be, it's going to be super surreal, even in the moment. But I think if I can just get through <laughs> all of the hard stuff and just appreciate everything, then I think it'll be, it'll sink in faster if I do that. Great stuff. Appreciate your time. Congratulations again. We're looking forward to Sunday. And again, Husker fans, if you want to be a part of it, we're packing PBA to honor Jordan, to honor uh, the team that she's a part of, the, the, the incredible Big Ten championship team, but then also big-time matchup against Indiana. So we're packing PBA, huskers.com slash tickets. Be there, be loud, and um, again, continue to show the world uh, what Husker Nation, how they support women's basketball. Jordan, thank you so much. We'll look forward to seeing you here on Sunday. Thank you very much. I, I look forward to it as well.